Uh, today we are going to discuss pharmacology of aspirin as an antiplatelet and antithrombotic drug. Now we are, uh, all of us know that formation of a platelet plug or platelet aggregation is essential for the formation of a clot. And once a clot is formed inside a blood vessel, it is called as a thrombus. So antiplatelet drugs, here specifically aspirin, inhibits platelet aggregation and thereby inhibit the process of thrombosis, specifically the arterial thrombosis. Because uh, in arteries, uh, uh, when we talk about the thrombus that is formed in the arteries, uh, platelets are the main constituents of uh, arterial thrombosis. So uh, when we talk about the uh, usage of aspirin, aspirin is specifically useful in the prevention and treatment of arterial thrombosis and ischemic diseases. It reduces subsequent or secondary myocardial infarction by inhibiting the formation of thrombus uh, in unstable angina. Uh, it inhibits the formation of thrombus in uh, cerebral blood vessel. Therefore, it is uh, useful in, the, uh, in reducing the risk of uh, transient ischemic attack. It also reduces the risk of stroke and the peripheral uh, vascular disease that is uh, intermittent claudication uh, characterized by difficulty in walking, uh, limping movements. Now, in order to understand the antiplatelet mechanism of action of uh, aspirin, let's first recapitulate uh, physiology of platelet aggregation. Now, this is a slide that explains physiology of platelet aggregation. Now, in this slide, I have shown here, this is the tunica intima, uh, which is made up of endothelium, that is endothelial cells, uh, these red color endothelial cells and platelets, these are the blue colored platelets which are found circulating in the blood. Now, uh, prostacyclin that is PGI2 and nitric oxide, uh, these both are very strong inhibitors of platelet aggregation and uh, they also prevent activation of platelets. Uh, now, these prostacyclin and nitric oxide, they are synthesized by the endothelium and released in the blood. Now, whenever there is damage to the endothelium, now because of the damage to the endothelium, there is fall in the synthesis of prostacyclin, there is fall in the synthesis of nitric oxide, because of which the platelets, they become activated. And apart from this, due to the damage to the endothelium, the subendothelial collagen is exposed. So these are the blue colored fibers I have shown in the diagram. This is the collagen. Now, the damaged endothelial cells, they release von Willebrand factor. Now, this von Willebrand factor, uh, it binds to the collagen and further uh, the activated platelets, they bind to the von Willebrand factor through the GP1B receptors. So, these GP1B receptors, they are found located on the surface of the platelets and the platelets, they bind to von Willebrand factor through these receptors. Now, this I have shown clearly in this diagram. This is the diagram, uh, this is the collagen. Uh, one willebrand factor that is released by the uh, damaged endothelium and this is the activated platelet which uh, binds to the uh, one willebrand factor through GP1B receptor and this results in further activation of the activated platelets. Now these platelets they possess a receptor that is called as a GP2B3A receptor. This receptor is also called as a fibrinogen receptor. Now activated platelet releases uh, mediators of platelet aggregation namely thromboxane A2, uh, ADP that is adenosine diphosphate and 5-hydroxytryptamine uh, that is 5-HT or serotonin. So these are the very strong or the very potent mediators of platelet aggregation and these all, really, these all are released by the activated platelet. And further uh, these mediators uh, they activate GP2B3A receptors. Now these GP2B3A receptors, these are the fibrinogen receptors. That means these receptors, once activated, they bind to the fibrinogen. Now, fibrinogen further binds to the platelets. So, this uh, uh, diagram here, we can see that this is the activated platelet. Uh, there is activation of GP2B3A receptor which binds to fibrinogen. Fibrinogen further binds to another platelet. Again, this gp 2 b 3A receptor, it binds to the fibrinogen. So, there is formation of a platelet plug. So, all the platelets, uh, they form a platelet plug. Uh, there is cross-linking of platelets and the fibrinogen here, it functions like a glue. So, there is uh, formation of the platelet plug, uh, which is very essential for the formation of clot. And a clot that is formed inside a blood vessel is called as thrombus. 
Now this is a slide that very clearly explains antiplatelet mechanism of action of aspirin. Now aspirin basically inhibits the synthesis of thromboxane A2 uh, and uh, further it also inhibits thromboxane A2 mediated activation of GP2B3 receptors and by inhibiting these receptors it inhibits uh, final uh, platelet aggregation. Uh, let's uh, understand the mechanism of action. Now this is a schematic diagram that shows synthesis of thromboxane A2. Now when, when a uh, platelet is activated, uh, the phospholipids which are present in the cell membrane of the platelet, uh, they break to produce fatty acid that is the arachidionic acid. Now this arachidionic acid is further broken down to prostaglandin G2 by the enzyme uh, COX-1 that is cyclooxygenase 1 present in the platelets. Now prostaglandin G2 is further metabolized to PGH2 and PGH2 finally produces thromboxane A2 uh, in the presence of thromboxane synthase. So this is how thromboxane A2 is produced in an activated platelet. Now this thromboxane A2 uh, which is released from the activated platelet, it is a very potent platelet aggregator and once it is produced it binds to uh, thromboxane A2 receptors uh, which are present on the uh, cell membrane of the activated platelet. Now uh, this uh, binding of thromboxane with its uh, receptor activates a G protein coupled GQ pathway. Now GQ stimulates uh, protein uh, phospholipase C and which hydrolyze uh, PIP2 that is uh, which hydrolyze phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate and hydrolysis of this PIP2 results in the production of uh, inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol. Now these uh, two that is the diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate uh, these are uh, very potent secondary messengers. Now inositol triphosphate it uh, stimulates the release of calcium from smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now this calcium that is released, it causes degranulation uh, or the rupture of dense granules which are present in the platelets. Now degranulation of uh, these uh, granules results in the release of further release of 5-hydroxytryptamine and adenosine diphosphate. These are again very potent mediators of platelet aggregation. Now apart from this, uh, stimulation or uh, release of diacylglycerol stimulates protein kinase C and uh, this protein kinase C it further stimulates uh, GP2B3A fibrinogen receptors and uh, this induces cross-linking activation of these receptors induce uh, cross-linking with other platelets and uh, fibrinogen here uh, acts as a glue. So this is how uh, thromboxane A2 Synthesis is responsible for the platelet aggregation. Now aspirin inhibits the synthesis of thromboxane A2 by, uh, uh, by the acetylation that is aspirin acetylates and irreversibly inhibits uh, cyclooxygenase that is a COX-1 in the platelets. And aspirin also inhibits uh, thromboxane uh, synthase in the platelets and thereby it inhibits the synthesis of uh, thromboxane A2 and it uh, thus inhibits thromboxane A2 mediated uh, GP2B3 receptors mediated platelet aggregation. Now antiplatelet dose of aspirin is uh, 75 to 150 milligram per day. Its uh, elimination half-life is 2 to 3 hours and since aspirin uh, irreversibly inhibits cyclooxygenase in the platelets the antiplatelet effect of aspirin lasts for about 5 to 7 days. Uh, now when we talk about the adverse effects, uh, main adverse effects of aspirin uh, is the bleeding and also the RI syndrome. Uh, so this is all about the pharmacology of uh, aspirin as an antiplatelet and antithrombotic drug. Now if you find the video helpful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Uh, thanks for watching the video.